What up YouTube? Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Happy 2019. This is the first video I'm filming after the new year, I think. It's been a plethora of filming and editing and putting videos in my pocket is what I call it. I've been pre-filming, getting some videos that are just ready to roll so that now that I'm back in school things won't be so difficult and I won't feel any pressure because I'll have things ready to roll. Um, I did go ahead and roll out the time sensitive videos. I'm going to try really hard to be better about getting the subscription boxes out earlier. I actually think that I'm probably going to unbox those in lives because I'm a little bit tired of doing those. They feel a little bit played out to me and it seems like by the time I get them done or filmed and edited and put out there's already been 15 other people that have already done it. 1500 other people who have already done it. So today I just I have been just wanting to play with makeup you guys I have been wanting to play. I have all these new things. My friend Courtney sent me, sent me a bunch of stuff um, I have some Christmas gifts and I didn't get a lot of makeup Christmas gifts aside from my friend Marlo and Courtney So thank you guys um, but Courtney has been kind of saving things for me in a box and with my Christmas gift she sent that and so I have a bunch of things that I want to try and I just kind of have been in this little conundrum with filming something and using products that I know work and not having any time on the other side of that to try things to see if they work because whenever I'm getting ready to go to church or getting ready to go to work or getting ready to go somewhere I want to use what's no nonsense and I don't want to take a chance of jacking up my whole face and so I just don't do it but on the other side of that I have all these products that I haven't tried I have these lashes that I haven't worn I have things that people have given me that I haven't tried and I'm like I just want to sit down and play I just want to sit down and experiment so I kind of decided that once a month I would just have a makeup discovery video I used to do this a lot actually and I haven't done it in a really long time and so here I am I'm just gonna chat with you chat about life and what's been going on in mine about you know looking forward to the future and what I'm gonna try to do as far as discipline is concerned and all these different things let's just chat let's have a mini heart to heart a get ready with me show you some of the stuff I got for Christmas and all those things so if you'd like to hang out with me while I do some makeup discovery makeup playtime dis experimentation and all that kind of jazz then please keep watching so one thing that I have if I can get my mirror out of the way is a lot of Mario Badesco's Badescu, Badescu, Mario Badescu sprays and I know a lot of people use these for toners people use them for setting sprays and all kinds of stuff but they smell really good they're very um, invigorating and refreshing and so I wanted to start using this as my toner I already have some aquaphor on my lips um, thank you Marlo for the reminder but I was smiling I was literally just smiling yesterday and my lip cracked right there I don't know if you can see there's like a split right there and I'm like oh my gosh I have to do something about this I exfoliated and put balm on and everything and it was still super crusty right there this weather just really messes with my skin so I'm gonna go ahead and spray some of this on I'm just gonna let it sink in I have a whole drawer full of skincare and I have tried almost all of it at one time or another but I have all these samples from Sephora Play and if you haven't seen my previous video I'll link it up there I have discontinued my Sephora Play because I have samples like I could hold up a hundred I have samples and I have samples and samples and samples for days for days you guys and I never use any of them and so that's what I'm going to do Today I have a rejuvenating serum by Tata Harper. I have another one that I have used once before by Bare Minerals that I like and I was going to do that one but that's what happens when you get these big drawers full of stuff. You can't really see what you have. So I am on a use it up mission. I'm just going to use this. I think this came in a Sephora um, deluxe like that special edition one. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Ooh, this has a strong fragrance. Um, yeah, so my friend Marlo says that, you know, she had a little visitor and she named him Tyrone. Well, I have so many visitors 
that like I have to call it like the Jacksons. Like I have um, Michael's right there, Tito, Jermaine, Janet, um, I can't remember the other ones, Reby? Something like that. But anyway, I have the Jackson family living on my face. Um, yeah, I would like them to take a vacation to Fiji. But I've been treating it. I used a mask yesterday. I've been exfoliating. I used some rosehip oil. I've been trying to treat it. I really don't know what did it. I've been trying some new foundations. I don't know if that did it. Um, I've also been eating in a very non-keto fied way. I really just, I didn't fall off the wagon. I just took a break because I was so tired of everything that I had been eating for the prior year because I had, I've been doing my modified version of keto. This is super strong smelling for about a little over a year. In, in October it was a year and I lost about 70 pounds and I'm super happy and with the way that I feel and the progress that I made. It was slow and steady and I felt like I was doing it in a very healthy way and I'm gonna spray this again. Mm, it just feels so nice. I'm gonna turn on my fan. I'm sorry if it causes a buzz but it, these lights are super hot. Is it okay? Um, but anyways, I over Thanksgiving and Christmas, I just kind of said, I'm going to eat and enjoy. But I felt lethargic. I felt fatigued. My inflammation was increased. Um, I gained about 10 pounds, but I've been back full force on the keto for about three days, and I've already lost eight of those 10 pounds. So I know that the majority of it was water. And that's comforting to know that I can't do that much damage to myself and that nothing is irreparable and I can get back on track. But at the beginning of every year, I'm going to move this for a minute. I feel like it's in between me and you. Um, at the beginning of the year, every year, my church does a fast and it's, it's totally optional. It's just one of those things like starting the year focused on God and what you need to do, you know, where he's leading you, what he was call you to do. I, I'm having trouble coming up with words, but basically just a month to focus on God, spend time in prayer, more prayer, more time in, in the Word and all those things and kind of adding a discipline or removing some physical or earthly thing from your life so that there is more room more margin for you to really concentrate on God. And I've never fully participated in that before. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. A lot of these things came from Courtney. This is Neutrogena Hydro Boost. And it reminds me of, it reminds me of Moisture Surge. The consistency of it is blue. Let's not spill. But I'm gonna use that for my moisturizer. I want something light, because I'm gonna use a pretty heavy um, foundation, I think. You may hear lots of things fall, but I'm going to try to uh, not have my giant mirror in front of me, but still be able to see what the heck I'm doing. But anyway, um, our pastor, my church is Life Church. I, I go to two different churches, In Person Church is Life Church. I'll put that info down below. Um, and online elevation out of North Carolina. And so my in-person church is Life Church, and that's the church that I'm talking about with the fast. And I've never fully participated, number one, because I didn't know if I could have the discipline to do it as far as food is concerned. And also because um, I just didn't know what it was that I needed to, to let go of. I never felt convicted or compelled to do it fully. Um, you know, there are a couple times that I fasted the internet <laughs> for you know a week or two weeks or whatever um, and those kind of things. Things that I felt had a little bit too much significance and I had made too much of a priority out of. And so this year I feel super compelled. I'm going to use the confidence in an eye cream. This is actually on sale half price on Ulta today and after I talk to you about <laughs> what I'm going to do for my fast then you'll understand why I'm kind of conflicted here. Um, but I have like just a little bit left in here. 
but anyway I decided I was going to get hardcore back into keto but not you know I for a while I had been modifying and I was including a few things that are not necessarily keto like a little bit of fruit a little bit of oatmeal um, not necessarily really terrible for me things but things that are definitely carbs and um, and I was okay with that and I was still steadily losing weight and I wasn't too concerned about it but that is one thing that like to get back on track I need to do keto hardcore I mean no refined carbs no, like carbs from veggies and that's about it and so I um, let's see I already got my lip stuff on let's just give this a minute to sink in so I decided to fast sugar entirely and refined carbs as in you know grains oats rices any of that jazz none of that and so essentially um, vegetables and meat <laughs> and vegetables and meat so I've done that for the last three days my my mental clarity is already here my fatigue is starting to lift my inflammation is getting better because the choice to do this wasn't just for weight loss for me. It had a lot to do with, you know, my pain condition with fibromyalgia and all those things. As I was doing keto, I found that my inflammation was much reduced and my pain was reduced. I didn't have as many flares. The flares that I did have weren't lengthy. And so it was worth it for me to do it despite the weight loss. So no carbs, no sugar for an entire month. I'm not going to stray from my plan at all. Um, and I already feel so much better. I just already feel so much better. And I think, why do I even do that to myself? Like, why do I think that I'm missing something and go back to things, macaroni and cheese for Christmas and a pineapple upside down cake and English coffee that I had to taste because I was making it for other people and I didn't want to give it to them and then it'd be nasty and me not know it. Like I left an ingredient out or I burned it or whatever. All those excuses and reasons why. But, you know, I, I'm back on it and I feel so good about it and I feel in my heart I really believe that this this straight up keto no modifications is going to go on. I think I'm going to try to continue it on all the way until mid-March which is spring break and I'm like okay I'll have a cheat day in, you know on spring break. When? And then back on the wagon I go. The other thing is makeup. And I'm not fasting the putting on of makeup. I'm not fasting makeup entirely to the point where if I run out of something that I use on the daily that I wouldn't replace it. And that's what I was talking about. This is one of my daily eye creams and I'm about to be out of it and it's on sale for half price right now. So it would not be smart of me to not pick it up whenever I know I'm going to use it. I don't have a backup and this one's going to be gone in a week or so and so I'll probably do it but as far as just buying makeup just for the sake of the next new thing I'm not going to do that for all of January and I am for you know I'm also thinking of extending that out number one I need to pay off a few things number two I need some money in the bank number three I don't need to be excessive and and I've heard I've seen a lot of people doing no buys and low buys and I've seen people talking about doing it for a year. I, I've seen and heard all these things that people are doing for the beginning of the year and I respect that and I appreciate that. Um, you know a lot of people have kind of rolled their eyes at it and, and allowed it to make them feel as if people who are doing that are being judgmental toward the other person who is continuing to buy. You know what? What you do with your money and how you use it is zero percent my business. And so I have respect for if you can afford to do it and it's, you know, whatever. You do your thing. You do you, boo. Like everybody always says, do you, boo. No buy, low buy. If that's your thing, do it. If you feel like you've been excessive and you need to get, get a grip on it, you do you do things in the way that you like I just I gave myself a 30-day period I gave myself a period of time that I knew that I could be successful with and if I do well and I feel good about what I've done and I want to continue it on then I will if something comes out that I have the money to buy that's not going to interfere with my goals as far as getting my finances in better order then I'll get it it's not going to be excessive and I don't know if you guys have noticed I haven't talked a lot about it but I've been extremely choosy about what I've 
bought in the last six months or so. Um, I bought equipment, my camera, my laptop. I have to pay those things off. That's where my finances have gone. And so I had that money allocated for something else. But if I hadn't used it for that, I think I would have been putting it in the bank. And that's what my focus is now is building up my emergency fund and having a nice little nest egg of cushion to fall back on should anything happen with my older vehicle, should anything happen, you know, with my health or anything. I don't like not having a backup plan. So that's it. I need to get my finances in control and my spending under control and I need to get my eating under control. And those are things that the further away you get from it, the harder it is to be disciplined in it. And I don't want to get far away from it. So that's why I'm addressing it now. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start getting into some of this stuff. I was watching an Emily Noel video. She did 31 days of glitter and she was talking about how she was avoiding it for so long because she just didn't really like it or felt uncomfortable or not very um, talented with it and so she just avoided it entirely and she said after 31 days she learned all these things and she said there's a lot of people who just you know and myself included do things that are um, second nature to us or things we're good at but we avoid other things and we just avoid it for, for me it's kind of it's like cream products cream anything and I don't get along but if I spent 31 days working on it I could probably find ways to make it work where I would actually like it or some elements of it um, I'm not <laughs> I am NOT committing to 31 days of cream contour cream highlight whatever but I am saying that I want to try some of those things my friend Courtney gave me a NARS uh, contour stick and I'm like hmm I don't really know what to do with this thing but I, I kind of want to try some of these things and that's what um, you know the makeup discovery thing is about for me I'm not gonna do this when I have a full face of makeup done I'm not gonna do this and jack up my whole face knowing that I have to go to work or wherever so that's a lot of the reason why I haven't and I've got all these beautiful lashes and they're giant and they're beautiful and I've never tried them because I will always go to my easy lashes that are already cut and already fit to my eye and I already know are easy to apply that I already know that I like because it's easy and I can count on it and I don't have to worry about the result. Um, for me when I'm in a rush and getting ready in a time crunch I will these will sit in my drawer for two more years and I don't want to do that. I want to use these. I want to find out which ones I like and the ones that I don't I want to pass on to someone else that can enjoy them. And so I think I've explained that thoroughly and enough. So Courtney and I had talked about this Urban Decay All Nighter foundation and I had it in a 3.5 which was too light and I had it in a 4.5 which is too dark and she had the same situation and she had four and that's what I th thought I needed and I had the one I think she needed the 3.5 and so we exchanged because I still have I still have a yeah I still have a 4.5 <laughs> and so anyways I want to try this at super full coverage and so I'm not sure how the cream contour is going to go with a really full coverage foundation that I think sets really fast, but we're still gonna give it a roll. Also, um, Courtney sent me one of these Juno sponges because I really wanted to try it and I don't think that she was a fan of it, but I wanted to try it. I have another beauty blender ready to roll if, in case that doesn't work for me. Um, I have this Makeup Revolution, uh, what's it called, my eyes. I don't know what this is called. It doesn't even have a name, but it's a liquid eyeliner. And I want to give that another try. I've only used it once. Um, I have a new, this is a gift from Courtney Gerard Cosmetics Brow Bar. I have a Dandelion Highlighter also from Courtney. So there's just, I'll, I'll just talk about these things as I go. But once I get my face on or once I get the foundation on and all that, I will just integrate some of these things in. I may use all of them, I may not use all of them, but just as things look like they're gonna fit in well, I'm gonna try them. We'll see what I come up with. I think this is gonna be my first thumbnail where I have myself looking like this on one side, like all sad and, and then over here I'm like, you know, 
Anyways, it, I might look like a hot mess, but here's the good news. When I get done, I'm going to pull my lashes off, I'm going to wash my face off, and I'm going to watch church and take a nap. So it doesn't matter. But I do like the way this um, Hydro, whatever, this Hydro Boost, this really is, it does give me the, feel the same, like the way my skin feels after moisture surge. So this may be a good drugstore alternative for that. So let's talk about primers. Okay, the next thing I always put on is Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. And man, you guys, this stuff, I've used this since before Christmas. I use it every day. It's, it's kind of a primer, but it's more like an added element of more moisture. And it just preps the skin and gets the skin ready for makeup. And it just, it makes, just such a smoothing pretty and very hydrated and I um, surface and I just think that I don't know if this is the reason but my skin tone has evened out considerably places that I used to have a lot of darkness are starting to even out and I think it's either this or a combination of this and the rosehip oil my friend Casey recommended that a long time ago and I've been doing that sporadically not as much as I should but a lot of places that I had really bad darkness are starting to lighten up so I really like this it's really nice and nothing um it doesn't interfere with poor professional or any other <laughs> any other primer that I use um, today also I don't have any primers from Courtney or as gifts or anything like that but I have a bunch of primers in my drawer that I haven't used in a long time I've got this Angel Veil I've got NYX pore filler I have this Stila one step um, skin tone correcting brightening serum I've got Hangover, ow, I just stuck that into my head. Um, Hangover RX. I've got this Cover FX Blurring Primer. Hmm, what shall I do? What shall I do? Oh, I also have this um, Philosophy Primer that I was testing for an influencer. got this anti-wrinkle lime blur factor instant wrinkle blurring primer I know I like that I need to use that up I also got that from influencer I think I am going to go in with the angel veil all over and then some pore filler in the inner parts so I need to see I need to see if I like these I know these were a recommendation from my friend Shannon Bitgood from a long time ago um, and I did like them I think but that's what I'm talking about like stuff gets in your drawer but that's what I'm talking about stuff gets in your drawer and gets buried and you never try it like you try it once or you don't try it at all and it's like I'm just tired of doing that I mean there might be 18 different awesome products in there that I don't even know that are awesome because I'm so busy buying new stuff that I can't even remember what I thought about it the first time I used it. So this is the Angel Veil. But yeah, so I'm not committing to a no buy per se, but I am going to be extremely choosy with the things that I buy. I'm gonna be extremely cautious to check against my collection. And if something is too similar, or if I have you know similar shades in other palettes, I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass and also I have been feeling like um, I've almost entirely neglected my Rocking Every palette series because I've been trying out new things. Another thing that Emily Noel said that really um, struck a chord with me and really made me think like I had already been thinking about it but her talking about it made me feel even more compelled is she said that people are so busy to so busy getting out the video and I'm talking about youtubers in general um, getting out the next new thing that they never really give anything an actual real try you know 
and I was having a conversation with my friend Marlo today that yeah there's a big difference between a first impressions video and a review and first impressions are just that but a lot of times people do a first impressions and they never return to it they're already on to the next thing and so then people who are depending on you for a review or depending on you for an opinion and they base what they buy on that if they buy something and especially if they're a beauty enthusiast that doesn't have a lot of experience with makeup and they're depending on you to show them how to use it or give them ideas of how to use it and you never return to it well you know and so that's part of the reason why um, I'm putting the pore filler on now that's another reason why I've started doing a three look one palette um, series again I will have probably already up by now if if one of them or both of them are up I will uh, I'll link them for you up there but I don't know why I have so much trouble talking and doing this at the same time but I do any face products um, I decided to do three looks one palette because I wanted to to get a really good handle on how it performs before I tell you about it or show it to you and it, or a lot of people get palettes it's like here's three ideas this thing is spewing primer all over my table it's like you have neglected us we're gonna act a total fool now that you decided to grace us with your presence but after I did those because initially like I wanted to do a first impressions I wanted to get a video a video <laughs> I wanted to get a video out discussing the ABH Sultry and the uh, Hood and Nude, New Nude palette. I wanted to do it immediately the minute I got it, which was way before Christmas, okay? But I didn't because it's like I want to do three looks. I want to try to do three completely different looks. I want to use almost all of the shades or at least a good number of them, not just a couple. And I want to be able to say what I think about it afterwards and I want to show you the versatility and all those things and Emily was saying that she thought that that was an area of the beauty community that was really missing and I'm like good I'm glad it's really missing because that can be my spot to fill because I enjoy that that is what I enjoy I love getting in depth into a product and if I'm always chasing after the next new thing I'm never going to be able to do that and so as much as I wanted to talk to you guys about the sultry and about the new nude I didn't want to put it up get my first impression out there move on to the next new thing like I didn't want to do that and so I'm not going to do that so it may be way beyond when a product launches you'll see a video an in-depth and thorough video about it because that's kind of where I'm at that's what I that's how I feel and that's what I want to do that's what I enjoy doing I like the experimentation I like the you know let's try this let's see how this goes I did this kind of look this time let me go for this let's go th let's go cool this time I went warm last time let's see what this shimmer can do if I use a B and C with it you know those kind of things so that you really get some good information from my videos not just what I think about the first think about it the first time I touch it all right so after 30 minutes my camera cuts off so yeah I put on some primer water if that part got cut off and I'm also going to um, show you that the next this was my Christmas present to myself it was the only palette I bought over Christmas even though all these pretty ones were dropping I got the um, Manny MUA Greek Goddess palette so this is the next one that I'm going to be doing three looks one palette and I was going to use this today but because I'm going to do that I think I'm going to make you wait see how I can be so I think what I'll use is this one that um, maybe I'll combine the two I don't know what I'm going to do I'm going to wait and see I am going to go ahead and start with my foundation. I'm kind of scared about this all-nighter because it's super high coverage, super like kind of flat and matte, and I'm a little bit scared about <laughs> what it's going to look like. So I'm going to work in small sections. I think I'm going to 
pull my big mirror back up here. I think I'm going to use my brush from, it needs a good wash, but my other ones are washed and drying. So I waited on this one so I would have at least one to use. The Luxie 532 Round Top Blender. I'm going to use that on one side and I'm going to use this blender on the other side. I'm going to squeeze all the water out of it. I really am assuming that you use this the same way you use a beauty blender, which is damp. We'll see. I do like the point that will go up into the crevices, and I do like that it has a flat place that you can use to apply powders and just put on foundation and I'm assuming you can use the butt end of this too as well so we'll see what happens but you see what I mean like I can't just do this on a day when I have to be somewhere because what happens if everything turns out like a hot mess and also with these kinds of videos where you're just kind of experimenting you can figure out ways to alleviate problems or remedy problems that you find along the way as well. Like maybe I could add an oil to this to share it out a little bit or maybe I can use Fix Plus. You know, those are things that I probably wouldn't have the time to, to do if I was in a rush to get ready to go somewhere. So I'm not really sure even how much of this to use. I'm just going to go for it. Since I know this video is going to be super long, probably 45 minutes I will probably during the times that's what it looks like during the times that I can zoom through I'm going to I don't know about this color you guys I do know to work in sections because it's very, it sets very quickly. And I also know that it oxidizes. I don't know. Let me look in this mirror. It looks a little yellow to me, but we'll keep moving forward here. Oh yeah, I was supposed to use a sponge on one side. Okay. <laughs> My hair is getting involved here. doesn't feel moist at all. I wonder if I squeeze too much out of it. Courtney also gave me some coconut scented Mac Fix Plus so I'll use that and see what if that helps. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I like this. I had a lot of people that I watched using this going oh this is so awesome leave such an awesome finish like oh I don't know about that you guys I don't think I feel that way but let me let me keep trying I'll go over it see what is up with this it is attached to my head and I don't have enough hair so I'm not gonna pull it out oh I think I'm gonna have to use my regular beauty blender you guys cuz that uh, what? That is not looking good. And this looks totally orange to me when I put it on over here. Michael Jackson is looking pretty hairy right now. I'm gonna go over the whole thing with the beauty blender. I don't know if I like this. I do like the, the scented MAC Fix Plus though. I like it a lot. This looks like a mask. I'm looking in my monitor. It looks like a white mask. I don't know. You know, you can just never really tell until you've put on some, you know, setting powder and 
bronzer and all that. I don't know how I feel about this, you guys, but I'm just going to leave it there, see what happens. Okay, I think I'm going to try to use this contour stick. It's not a good shape, I don't think, to draw. So I think I'm going to use a brush. I think I'm going to use this brush. I think I'm just going to put it on here and stamp it on my contour area. Well, that's not as dark as I thought it was going to be so good. But I think it's taking my foundation off. This is my problem, you guys. And this looks purple. That's my problem, you guys, is it jacking up my foundation underneath. Well, that's definitely a contour line. Let's make it a little bit more pronounced. I'm going to flick it up. I don't know. Obviously, I'll set this with powder contour later. I don't know if this color is a good match. To me, it looks purple. I don't know. I'm going to do it in the other areas. So I'm gonna tap that out. <laughs> I'm looking at myself in my monitor and I just don't know about it. I don't know about it. I'm gonna go on my hairline here. Okay, what is this blue thing? And I kind of want to do, I'm afraid to do it with the stick. I kind of want to do a little bit of a nose contour with this. I don't know about this color. It doesn't, let's see what it says, Hot Sand and Laguna. I don't know, I haven't seen any other colors, so I don't know if this is the one for me or not. It is a nice, I mean, it's a nice texture and it's blending out really easily. So that's good to know as far as the NARS product is concerned. And I'm guessing that this is a good time to do it right after foundation like I don't know anything about this you guys so I'm just like complete novice when it comes to this I don't know how I look but it looks kind of crazy to me so I'm gonna go ahead and um, do my under eye situation this is another product that I have that I haven't used very much and that's the uh, creaseless concealer maracuja creaseless concealer by Tarte and I don't know about this color and I've never really given it a good shot so I'm going to do use that um, my regular other stuff I may I'll pull out my other concealers in case I need to save the day with those but I'm going to use this but anyway, you guys, so it's a new year. I always like New Year's. I always feel, you know, refreshed because I've had a bit of a break from school. And I was a little bit sick and my husband was a little bit, not a little bit sick. We were a lot sick for the first part of um, the break. And so we made it, we got better before Christmas and had time to kind of get, I had time to get fully lazy. <laughs> So that's a good thing and a bad thing because it made it real hard to go back, but it was so nice just to have time, 
you know I worked on my house I got my bathroom really nice and cleaned up where everything was in its place and I didn't have stuff sitting everywhere I got my um, my kitchen in order uh, for Christmas actually I guess I bought myself another Christmas present which was an air fryer and I've been experimenting with that and that's been really neat because you can cook almost anything in it and so I've been cooking meat in it and veggies in it I have plans to make some chicken wings um, I know this is really pigmented stuff and a little goes a long way so I'm gonna start with just a few dots and I don't even know what brush to use I'm gonna try this one this is an eco tools I don't know if this is the right choice but you know that's what this is about you guys what I'm talking about this is how you figure out I feel like I need the warmth of my finger This is definitely emollient, but I don't know about the texture of it. Like it's super tacky, so I know that I would have to set it. And that's another question I've been asking myself. I really want to try doing eyeshadow without setting my primer. And I want to do it on a day where I can give it time to see if it's going to crease to see. Because I have had that happen before. But I haven't ever really, you know, done a full wear test to see if after a few hours it's creasing because I didn't set my primer or you know does it really make a difference with the the way the vividness of the color the color payoff I don't know about this I feel like I need to tap it out with my beauty blender I know whenever I learned about this from Emily Noel she was using like one of these brushes so I probably should have saved this for that I don't have another one anywhere I'm just gonna try to tap it out with my beauty blender. I like, I mean, the color is good. The color I'm using is light, medium, neutral. I feel like this part of my eye is still super dark, so I'm gonna go in with just a dot of shape tape. Two dots of shape tape and just fill that in but I got the color light and it was just way too light so whenever it came out in the tube with the with the applicator I got a different one and that's what I'm using today we just got through having this giant um, storm I'm gonna have to put some conceal and define on the Jacksons. Randy. There's Randy. <laughs> I don't know why. I used to be obsessed with the Jacksons when I was younger. And I knew everything about them at one time. But we had a weird snowstorm and it literally rained snowed sleeted hailed rain or thundered and lightninged all in a 12-hour period we had one snow day which was super nice so i got one extra day off um it really looks like this is already creasing i don't have a problem going back in and tapping it out as long as it doesn't do that once I set it. I just don't know how, and maybe it's because I have, you know, crepey 47 year old eyes, but I don't know how people get away with not setting their concealer. Like I have to. And I know pe some people can just take a wash of a powder with a little brush and it sets their under eye and it looks wonderful. It does not for me. Like if I use just a little brush and just kind of put a tiny amount on it's creasing within an hour and looking like it's going to slide off my face this is the only method that i have found that works for setting um concealer for me 
and it's not perfection my under eye is never going to be perfection because I have really dark circles and wrinkles but this is like the best the best I can get it to look with what I'm working with here so I'm gonna go back through with my brush and just make sure that there's not a lot of foundation settling in my crevices and I'm gonna lightly set I almost feel like this foundation doesn't even need to be set but I just don't feel very comfortable putting on bronzer and all that stuff over a non-set face I just it just seems like everything gets hung up so I'm going to do it anyway but it was an interesting weather situation the next day after that happened after the one snow day um, the next day it was 40 I think 48 and sunny and every like you couldn't even tell that it even snowed Oklahoma weather you guys is a trip So today, once I get to my eyes, I am going to not set. Actually, I may do one set and one unset and see what the difference is as far as the color because I'm so curious about it. Like I know a lot of people do and I know a lot of people don't. Raw Beauty Christie is one who doesn't set, Emily Noel doesn't set. And so, I need to find out if I need to set, <laughs> or if I should or should not set. So I watched an excellent movie the other day. My friend Matthew recommended on Netflix, and it's called Mr. Church, and it has Eddie Murphy in it, and it's based on a true story. And he was adamant about me watching this. I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch it. And I cried the entire time. So I do have to say this. Like, if you have recently lost somebody, or if you um, are highly sensitive or had, had a medical situation or cancer or somebody that you love with cancer or something like that, that is still raw and, f and fresh on your heart, I, I would probably recommend that you wait or skip this for now. Okay, I have 822 eyeshadow primers. So I think I'm gonna try a different one today. What shall it be? You know what? I'm not going to. I'm going to use my Painterly Paint Pot and I'm not going to set it. But I'm going to do my found, or my my highlighter and my blush first. I am going to use two of the things that Courtney sent me. I have a Pixie by Petra uh, Beach Rose blush and I have um, Dandelion Twinkle highlighter by Benefit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. But anyways, it is such a good story. It is such a heartwarming story. Whenever it's over, you're sad, but your heart is warmed at the same time because it's just such a beautiful story. And it impacted me seriously. Like it impacted me so much. And I just really recommend it to everybody because it's really a good, it's really a good movie. Um, I've also been trying to watch that Bird Box movie. I've fallen asleep twice. Not because it was boring, but because um, I was on some medicine that was making me groggy because I was having a, a flare. And this is the Dandelion Twinkle. I think this is going to be super subtle. But sometimes subtle is good. I don't know. It is super subtle. Maybe I'll put something else on top of it. But if you're in the mood for a good heartwarming movie, that's a good one, the Mr. Church. And I'll have to get back to you about Bird Box because <laughs> I haven't finished it. Maybe today. This is still pretty. It's just not super, it's like a real subtle glow. And I don't know, I, I don't ever really want to not glow a lot. 
like I always want a lot of glow so I don't know how much I'll use this but we'll see when I get done okay we're going with the blush that's actually really pretty but I think I would like this it's really pigmented for sure I think I would like this more. I swear my nose is itching so bad. I think I would like this more in the summer with like a bronzy look. I don't know, it's kind of an amber color. Depends on what I'd be wearing on my eyes. It's not bad. It's definitely different than anything I have for sure. So I'm gonna put it in my everyday drawer and give it give it a try. I feel like this um, concealer is totally setting settling into my lines. In a big way. I think it looks super crepey and not good, but it's whatever you guys, it's whatever. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my, it's like I'm nervous about not setting the the primer and so like I don't want to, I want to put my eyebrows on first. I'm gonna just do it. I'm just gonna do it. And then if it creases, I'll tap it out before I go in with the eyeshadow. I'm gonna use a painterly paint pot. So yeah, New Year's, I always feel like it's good to have a fresh start and I like to introduce you know some kind of new discipline one thing that I'm doing is a gratefulness journal um, gosh I say Emily Noel 20,000 times every video but I really enjoy her channel and her personality and just her look her outlook on life um, she was she actually is like 52 lists or something. I don't have it in here. It's in there by my computer where I do it in my more during the morning during my quiet time But I definitely want to start journaling again and especially in like a mind frame of gratefulness like writing down things I'm grateful for things that make me happy because I want My mind space. That's what I want my mind space to be to consist of is positivity positive things I'm going to go ahead and bronze my face with Better Bronzer. I don't think I have another bronzer, so I'm going to use Better Bronzer. And this should have been done before the blush. I get to talk in and I don't know what the heck I'm doing, you guys. But I want to set that contour. You guys can tell me if you think the contour looks any more obvious than it did ordinarily does because I'm not a big time contourer. I really just bronze my face and leave it at that. But anyway, so I'm going to start doing that every morning along with my Bible verses and I have been watching so many favorites. 2018 favorites videos and I do have one I actually have three planned and I'm hoping that they work out I want more highlighter I'm sorry I just can't I need more highlighter I need more so I'm gonna use my makeup geek starlight I have one obviously beauty related best of 2018 and then I have one lifestyle and then I'm gonna do like a spiritual personal growth kind of video. It's hard to break them up into categories and so some of it is gonna seem super random. But, there, that's better. I'm gonna go through and just kinda blend everything together. Michael Jackson is still shining like a new dime, folks. And I didn't say so. I was using Peach Perfect powder. I don't know how I feel about the way my face looks, but we're going to roll with it. Yes, we are. 
Time for eyebrows. I am already using some Anastasia Brow Wiz pencils that I've been neglecting because I just kept on buying micro brows even though I had like six my or six um, brow wizzes. I just I prefer the chocolate color on the micro brow but I didn't have any backups and I have so many of these and I'm like I just need to get through them but what I've been using is soft brown and chocolate in the brow wiz and I just put the soft brown on the front part and the chocolate on the outer part and it works out okay. I am not going to talk through this part because number one I have to concentrate and number two it takes a long time and so it would be just better for you for me to just do it on fast forward or just exclude it entirely. Okay, it doesn't look like the primer is creasing too awfully bad, so we're just going to leave it alone for now and get the brows done. I actually think I'm just going to go off camera to do the brows and I'll be back. Alright, I'm back with the brows on. I just kind of smoothed out the primer a little bit because it did look a little bit like it was trying to crease or be a little bit patchy so I am going to go ahead and set this eye with powder so we're going to do a little experiment I did use the brow bar to go I'm not sure if the colors dark enough you guys can tell me if you think it is or is not so, one side set, one side is not. I don't even know what I'm going to use on my eyes. I think I'm going to use this Carity Rosé All Day. This is the one that Courtney gave me for Christmas. And I used it on a an Instagram Live and I really liked it. Um, this time I think I'm going to go a goldy, kind of goldy bronzy route instead of the pink and see how it goes. I'm not going to do a really big time anything on my eye today because I want to try some different lashes and don't want this to take six and a half hours so I am going to I'll show you what I'm using but I'll probably zip through this on the editing part so that we can get on to trying on some of these lashes I do not know which ones I'm going to use yet but we're going to size them and see which one looks the best and go for it so I'm going to go in with bottled up for my transition color. This is kind of rosy, but it's kind of the only mid-tone, so I'm going to go with that. Okay guys, so now I'm done with the eyeshadow part. Um, this is the eye that I didn't set the primer. And this is the eye that I did set the primer. Do you think one is more vibrant than the other? Like just me looking in my monitor and me looking in this mirror. I don't see a dramatic difference, but this one does look a little bit more vibrant. 
maybe this would be a more effective experiment if I had a really bright or really vivid color maybe but I mean I don't think it's so noticeable that you would know that I did that but I do think this eye is a little bit more vibrant and I really do love this Carity palette and I think it's neat that you can definitely go a pinky route but and I can show you I can insert a picture of my New Year's Eve look I use this for my New Year's Eve look and I'll insert a picture of that um, so that you can see it more of a pinky route this is more of a rosy bronzy and while I had to dump my memory card in between I did size some lashes just because I wasn't going to do all that while I was on camera with you and this is how much I cut off three pair of lashes so I did these these are the Ardell Studio Effects uh, number 230 I got these because they kind of reminded me of the House of Lashes Siren Mini. And then these are the Wisp It Real Good by Velour. And then these are the Grandeur by Kiss Couture. Let's see. It's the Kiss Lash Couture 5th Avenue Connect Collection. And I'm really leaning towards this one but I think I'm gonna put one of these on one eye and one on these on the other before I even get started with my liner I am gonna try this is one that uh, Courtney sent me it's knobby eye color pen and it's a felt tip I may use that to fill in or I may just entirely use this Courtney also sent me some ColourPop eyeliners so I think I'm going to use this one which is called Call Me which makes me want to sing a blondie song. It's kind of a plummy brown. I think I'm going to use that to tight line and do my, my waterline with. But first I'm going to decide on eyelashes. So I wish that you could say to me that one or this one or that one. But I'm going to put one on one eye and just take a look and see. I have a little gripe about these Ardell lashes. It took me like five minutes to get the adhesive off that stuck it to the packaging and I almost ruined the lash trying to get it off. So it just always surprises me that they put that strong. I mean I know that they don't want it to let go and fall inside the package but still. Okay this is the Velour Wisp It Real Good which I think is flipping gorgeous. Let's see if I can get it to stay long enough to make an assessment. Maybe not. This one doesn't have any adhesive on it apparently. Maybe I'm not pushing it in hard enough. <laughs> as soon as I blink my eye, off it goes. Alright, I'm going to hold it up here and try to look at it. Oh my gosh. I really think that's what I'm going to end up going with. Just because they are so pretty. But I also want to try this grandeur and see. And I did like it that this came like in a little plastic box that you can put it slides out. That you can put it back in and I like that. I am terrible about keeping packaging. And the big bulky boxes that I don't want taking up all my space in my drawer. And this is the grandeur. But it's so very black. And it's very light. I expected it to be really heavy. I think that's what kind of kept me from using these before. I may have cut these a little too short. But once it's actually on, it's a different ball game because you actually flatten it out onto your lash line. But That's really pretty too. I think I'm just going to have to go with the Wisp It Real Good just because they are so pretty and so are these and I will use these soon. Like I said, just having these sized makes it, might, makes me so much more likely to try these. So I'll put these other two in my drawer 
and I'll use those in the near future because they're ready to roll and I will not have to spend two hours trying to size them. But first I'm going to go in with this Call Me liner on my lower lash line. I don't, I've had some of these liners before, but it's been a long time. I think I only had a black. And that's another issue I have with liners is they don't stay put. I think I'm a tight line too. I don't know if this will even show. But since I'm going to have it down below anyway, I might as well. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I just kind of want to do things that I hardly ever do. So putting it in my waterline and doing all that, I hardly ever do. So I'm going to curl my eyelashes with my Tarte Eyelash Curler. I was going to tell you guys, I didn't really continue on talking about my end of the year videos. I mean, I know, like, I'm always a day late and a dollar short, and it's like I always tend to get things out after a bunch of people have already done them. But for those of you who frequent and watch my channel, I'm sure there is a curiosity about what were my favorite things. And, and if you've watched most of my videos, or if you've been here a while and you've watched a lot of my videos, you probably already know the answer. I had such a hard time narrowing it down. I decided to do a top five, but that's the reason why I had to break it up into three videos because if I did it all in one, it would be super long. And plus there's just so many categories of, of cosmetics and there's also other things that are interests of mine that I would like to share with you guys. So that's what I'm gonna do. I wish I could remember what this is called. If I had to say anything about Makeup Revolution, I really do wish that they would label their packaging better <laughs> because some of this glitter is falling out because I, I can't remember what this is called and I would like you guys to be able, maybe I can, maybe I'll remember to look it up before I edit this or while I'm editing it, editing it. but it is a brush tip and it's really small and if I remember correctly, the time I did use this, I think it ran or went into my fine lines. But again, Emily Noel swears by it. So we're gonna go for it. Make sure I'm me leaning forward, I'm still gonna be in the frame. All right, let's give it a roll. did do a skip but let's see what we can do yeah I'm not the tip is not very flexible and that's what I love about the it superhero this may not even be a brush I think this is a felt tip I do not have luck with felt tip. This side is going on a little smoother, but it is very liquidy, and that's probably why it bled before. When I see ble when I say bleed, it's usually in my inner corner, and I don't go all the way into my inner corner because of that reason. If I have any tearing, I don't want it messing up everything that I just did. But anyway, this is, I mean, it's going to be adequate and it is filling in easily as liquids ordinarily do. Or felt tips is what I meant. But if you never give anything more than one try, you don't ever make any adjustments on how to make it work for you because most things you can 
See, but that is really kind of bleeding upward. Even though I did my little trick. Maybe I'll try the one Courtney gave me to kind of go in there and fix that. But first, let's fill in the gaps. Did you guys ever notice that I hold my eyeliners in between my two fingers? My pointer finger and my middle finger. It gives me very good control because I can lay lay it on my bottom finger. I wonder if any of you would be willing to try that and see if that gives you more stability with your liner. I never even really noticed that I did that till just now. It's like I don't want to go in. I want to go in with something drier. I think I'm gonna grab my Kat Von D Trooper. No, I'm not. I'm gonna grab my Architect. The one that came in the, what was it, BoxyCharm or Allure? Try to fix that line. The reason I love brush tips, I don't know, I might have made it worse, is because you, whenever you lay it against your lash line, and you push down it goes down in it like folds it like bends with the curve of your eye and so there's no skip but with a felt tip it or most felt tips it won't bend and so in order to make it across your last line it has to skip but I don't know if you can see, but in my inner corner, I do have skips. But if I try to mess with it too much, then it'll just get thicker and thicker until I don't like the way the liner looks. So my rule of thumb with um, liquid eyeliner or with especially black is once you got something that you can live with, leave well enough alone. I don't think it bled too too hardcore, but I am such a perfectionist that I drive my own self crazy. So there's the liner. I do like the way it looks. Got a little bit of a mess up over there, but I'm leaving well enough alone. Okay, so Courtney also gave me. I also have a mission to find a stick a stick um, foundation that works. She let, she gave me an Anastasia one that didn't work for her. Um, so I'm going to give it a try. Not today, obviously. But I don't know. I'm not loving the way my skin looks. But it looks better in the monitor than it does up close to me. And I really don't like the way my under eye looks. So I don't know. I think I'm just gonna have to probably abandon that maracuja even though I really wanted it to work I don't think it's going to but she gave me this little baby mega protein wet and wild and I really liked the brush I thought it looked really interesting so I'm curious to give it a try there is a hair me and hairs you guys seriously all right let's see what this can do since I'm gonna go in with falsies This doesn't, this seems pretty dry. Let me dig around in here. I do like dry formulas, but some just don't do anything. And I don't know if it's the formula or the actual brush, but it feels like it's not, it's like grazing along my lashes, but it's like not getting in there. It's not getting in there. Sorry. I gotta, let's see, I'm gonna go in. Hey, here's one I haven't used in a long time. I got a sample of Tarte, um, what is it? Something Camera Lashes. Lights Camera Lashes. And these, I used to love this mascara. 
but I just kept like you know moving on to others and I just kind of never went back you know and what the truth is with mascara if you're gonna wear falsies all you need is something to separate and darken and it doesn't have to be heroic Got a, more and more I have these funky lashes that just kind of stick out randomly and it looks like they're not attached to my lash line but they are all this is giving me some thickness some separation and some darkness I don't think this would be bad for an everyday mascara maybe I need to like, I don't know why. Maybe it's just I've been into makeup long enough. Like, I want to go back and revisit things that I used to love and find out if I still do. And, like, do I still love it? Is it still, have I found something that's so much better that I need to abandon this and just go on about my business? And But if you never take the chance to try it, how are you going to know? And if you're buying something new every 12 seconds, how are you ever going to return to anything? I don't know like I don't I don't know my mindset has just changed like I don't want to have makeup just for the sake of collecting it like what's the purpose if I wanted to just collect something I could just start collecting Beanie Babies I never did get much into Beanie Babies I'm gonna try this on my lower lash line too I had a couple but nothing that I mean I didn't uh, the things that I've collected in my life that I was hardcore about is Dran Dran stuff just because I was in love with them as a teenager and um, you know any kind of music paraphernalia paraphernalia memorabilia really is all I ever really collected I did like dolls porcelain dolls and angels and I still like those things and my mom still gives me angel stuff I did collect teddy bears look at me I'm saying I didn't ever collect anything and I collected all kinds of everything but that was mostly as a young person so I don't want to collect makeup I do want to have a makeup collection but I don't want to collect makeup I want to enjoy and use makeup I think that looks pretty good on the upper lash I think that looks good on my lashes all together I think it looks good Hmm. All right, but guess what's going to happen? Something miraculous is going to happen when I put these lashes on. I keep looking in my monitor because I'm like, hmm, nice wing, girl, nice wing. But these lashes are going to be, whew, just wait and see. I don't even know what I'm going to do with my lips. But she also gave me a navy blue, a navy blue one called No Shame. I'm going to try to do the waterline lining a little bit more because it does look super smoky. I would have preferred to pull it down onto the lash line though, but I don't want to do that now because it'll mess it up what I have going on here. So I think I'm just going to use this kiss glue that came out of the kiss thing because I know I love this kiss glue. If I can get this little mug out. Alright guys, this is the final look. I'll tell you about the lippy in a minute. But, what do you think about the difference between the set primer eye, the set primer eye, that one, and the not primer set eye, set primer eye. I think this one is a little bit more vibrant, but check out these lashes, dude. Uh, really? They are so pretty. I'm so glad that I sized them and put them on my face. My lip is 
the Hush Hush Buxom Plump Line Lip Liner and I wanted to try one of these uh, Buxom lip glosses that I got from the lip kit. It's like a Christmas set and I do have uh, unboxing and swatching video of that coming or it has already been posted. If it has, I'll put it up there. If not, it's coming soon. And this is called Hot Toddy. And since I had the lip split, I really didn't want to have anything matte on my mouth today. I wanted something glossy and pretty. And I am going to set with a setting spray that I have, I bought and I used a couple times and I never tried it again. So I don't even know if it's a good <laughs> setting spray or not. You know, right now I'm looking at my skin and I don't hate it. I don't know. We'll have to see how it wears, but I will add in my annotations on um, in my info box if I had an increasing in this eye on this eye later on in the day, or if one lasted longer than the other. I just need to give it some time. So we're going to go in with this. And this is the Essence Keep It Perfect Makeup Setting Spray. It was recommended to me from someone and I don't know who. <laughs> I think my eyeliner looks super janky because as it dries, it's making my eyelid pull down. I just caught it and I'm so glad that I did because it's crazy how that happens and you guys probably think gosh she doesn't know what she's doing with her eyeliner uh it changes it moves yeah this like oh my gosh i don't know what happened here but it it has my eye like the skin on my eye all funky It still looks funky. Looks a little funky over here too. Don't you love it? This is why I'm late every day. This is why I run late every single day. Cause I can't just leave it that way. Like I can't say, okay, that's all right. It looks all janky. No, I can't. I can't leave it looking all janky or um, not uniform or not uh, see, I'm messing it up. I'm messing it up. These, I think it's the lashes. It's got a real thick band. See, when I move the lash, <laughs> my lash, my eyeliner goes back where it's supposed to go. Huh. Well, I'm not going to jack with it any further. I say that as I jack with it further. Yeah, I'm making it look gnarly. Yeah, I'm making it look gnarly. <laughs> stop, Sherry. Stop, 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 stop. Leave well enough alone. Move this. But I love the lashes. All right, I am going to hang it up, you guys. This was fun. I did find a lot of things that I liked. I rediscovered some stuff. I will put in the annotations or in the info box if anything changed, if there's anything that um, didn't stick where it was supposed to stick, or if there's anything else that needs to be said from my little experimentation here. But these lashes are beautiful, and I wish that I could sing Salt and Pepper. Uh, push it real good because it's wisp it real good but anyways all right guys I'm gonna go I'll zoom out so you can see me and my ginormous t-shirt I'm so fancy today but isn't that the fun part about just sitting down and playing is that I don't have to get fancy my face looks fancy enough for everything I can wear this janky t-shirt Anyways, I'm giving you attitude. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I got to get off of here and go watch Church um, Online Elevation, starting a new series today that I'm super excited about. And yeah, 
I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, take care and God bless. Bye guys.